OK, welcome back to part two of the uh, Taylor 65B signal generator restoration or attempted restoration. Anyway, I better not speak too soon. And I've uh, spent a bit of time uh, looking through my uh, new acquisition and just seeing what's what. And in a few moments I'll just talk you through uh, uh, the, the circuit diagram. But uh, just a few things I've checked already. Um, so this resistor here which was actually is R1 on the circuit diagram, it's supposed to be 5.6 kilo ohms. I unsoldered one end and checked it and it was uh, I think it's about 11.6k so quite a little bit quite a bit higher than uh, even a 20% tolerance would allow for so that's going to get replaced. Uh, there's obviously capacitors here which uh, definitely going to need replacing. I've ordered some electrolytics to replace those uh, I've got to order some uh, polymer caps to place those and this box here which um, if I move a little bit there actually contains the RF output circuitry uh, lurking in there is also another uh, uh, paper and wax capacitor 0.1 microfarad so that's going to have to get replaced as well um, may potentially replace the output socket with a BNC that wouldn't make it strictly correct but uh, would certainly be uh, more effective and uh, the resistor attenuation network in there looks to be okay um, as far as I can tell. There's a, a 330 ohm, sorry a 30k resistor here which actually measures pretty close to what it's supposed to be so that's good um, and I've checked uh, one or two other things and they all seem um, something like uh, like they should be so I'll get the capacitors replaced uh, get that resistor replaced, uh, just check a few things over, clean the switches, um, obviously replace this mains lead down here and uh, make sure that it's uh, replaced with three leads and that there's a good solid um, uh, earth connection for the for the chassis and then uh, we'll bring it slowly up on a variac with the uh, current limiting and um, and see if we can um, see if we can get the old uh, the old beast back into life um, OK, I'll just uh, pop, pop it down now and get the circuit diagram and talk you through that. OK, welcome back. Um, here's the circuit diagram for the Taylor Model 65B and I think the first thing to say is actually it's a relatively simple circuit. You have to bear in mind that although there appears to be a lot of complexity here, in reality only one set of coils and capacitor is used at any one time depending on the position of this switch and one or two other bits get switched in and out as well notably here and also down here at the uh, the output attenuator so it's a relatively simple circuit uh, breaking it down then main supply comes in here through this uh, filter network which is actually contained in that sealed metal container down there um, and the purpose of this filter is to stop oscillations and the circuit from getting back into the mains electric supply so that's to protect uh, the rest of us from uh, spurious RF os oscillation. Uh, that then goes straight onto the primary of the, of the mains transformer which is the fairly meaty transformer here. Taps for 110, 210 and 240 volts obviously in the UK we're going to be on the 240 tap and then there's two secondaries the first secondary here provides 6.3 volts for the valve heaters and the dial light uh, so one side of that goes to the the common uh, ground and a, a side marked A there goes to um, the dial light and also the heaters of each of the three valves so that's an AC supply to heat them. The other secondary on this transformer, centre tap there, again the centre tap goes to ground and it's actually, this is the high voltage supply so as you can see both ends of that go to the two um, anodes in the 6x5 uh, set for full wave rectification mode. Um, probably important to say at this point that because of the way valves work they require a high voltage on the anode to attract electrons, electrodes from the heater th through the cathode past the grids or depending on the type of valve and so there's usually a, a fair amount of voltage um, in valve equipment that you simply wouldn't find in, in transistor equipment normally so it's important to be careful so if you are opening up valve kit 
you're doing it at your own risk it's obviously uh, potentially hazardous so be careful um, okay the other two valves um, have two quite separate jobs valve three down here a 6j 5g um, is it's a triode and it's set in here in the oscillation mode and it's the RF oscillator so using this network of capacitors and coils and that tuning capacitor there C9 uh, essentially this is what provides you with the different wave bands to produce the RF signal uh, the output from that is fed through the attenuation network out of there and eventually out of the out of the output in which you can adjust with the level and also with the attenuator control Valve 2, another 6J5G, works as an audio oscillator at about 400 Hz and it's possible to get the generator to produce RF, RF modulated with 400 Hz where this valve works as an oscillator or it's also possible to, to feed an audio signal in to the jack on the front panel. This valve, when that switch is in the appropriate position, this valve then acts as an amplifier and it's either the internal signal or the 400 Hz oscillation are combined with the RF signal and the modulation transformer, transformer 2 which is a small transformer down there and again that gets fed back to the output so a really simple circuit um, and uh, hopefully um, simple enough that even um, somebody like me could restore it been looking uh, on the internet and obviously there's uh, various bits of information. I found the original advert, I'll include a picture of that, uh, but the original advert said that the machine was uh, 15 pounds 10 shillings, so that's uh, 15 pounds 40 to you that uh, aren't familiar with uh, pre-decimalisation British currency. And um, the Bank of England's uh, inflation calculator tells me that uh, that would have been between 650 and 700 pounds back in the 1940s. So I think it's fair to say that this is uh, would have been quite a, a substantial um, piece of equipment at the time, um, and obviously you know bought by uh, workshops to help them with uh, aligning radio equipment. Okay, hope that's made some sense, and onwards, and hopefully upwards to a good conclusion. Okay well that's just about it for uh, part two of uh, the Taylor 65B uh, restoration project. Um, next is to get components ordered and uh, replace them and just to see, uh, see how things look. So um, that's going to be the next move. So watch this space. Um, in the meantime, if you've uh, if you've liked this or a previous video, um, would really appreciate it if you click like. That that helps. Uh, it also helps to to get a few more views. And um, obviously, if you want to comment, please do. I'm certainly no expert, but um, there may be somebody who's watched who is an expert who can um, can maybe answer your questions. But uh, anyway, I look forward to speaking to you again when I've got some. Uh, some more to show you with, with the progress on this unit.